UFP, the United Federation of Podcasts. Stand by to receive our transmission. You're listening to Star Trek Weekly News. I'm Tony Robinson. In this week's news, we have the Star Trek IV bombshell. Alex Kurtzman hints about Picard. All this and more coming right up. actually tell you something that uh, I haven't talked about yet, which is the following thing. <laughs> we have a movie that we are uh, being written right now that is going to uh, feature Chris Hemsworth, who's going to return as Kirk's father. And there's an adventure that Kirk and the others and Kirk's father are going to go on together. What? Yeah. Wait, are you, are you, are you, are you serious? Are you all right? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's going to be uh, the next story. Now that was J.J. Abrams speaking in 2014. Well, by now you've heard the news that Star Trek IV is in jeopardy. Uh, Well, actually it's been in jeopardy for quite a while. Uh, Quite a while ever since Chris Hemsworth and Chris Pine uh, went head-to-head on their salaries. Who should get paid more? Mm, Gosh, hard to think. Um, Will this movie ever get made? Well... Well, hopes for the movie continue to fade because the director, S.J. Clarkson, has moved on to a Game of Thrones prequel. S.J. Clarkson, who was tapped to help the next entry into the Kelvin Timeline film franchise back in April 2018, has moved to the worlds of Westeros as hopes for the movie continue to fade into the blackness of space. Both Chris Pine and Chris Hemsworth walked away from Paramount Pictures, when their salaries came into rocky negotiations. The outlook for Star Trek IV seemed, at that point, to be fading fast. And on January 8th, Deadline reports that the director, S.J. Clarkson, has moved over to HBO to direct the Game of Thrones prequel, and noting at the same time that the Trek IV project has been shelved. It would seem that HBO have been after S.J. Clarkson for some time, but when they learned that Trek 4 was on the rocks, so to speak, they grabbed her. And now they have her. What was special about S.J. Clarkson? Well, earlier this year, she became the first female director to be tapped to direct a Star Trek movie when she was hired to helm the fourth feature in the current series. As we all know, the fourth Kelvin timeline film was set to feature the return of Chris Hemsworth as George Kirk. But he managed to run the Kelvin into Nero's ship, and in doing so, terminated himself. And now, like him, the fourth movie seems to be dead in the water. And has anybody heard of the Quentin Tarantino Trek movie? Well, it's been more than a year since any word on that project has surfaced, so its status remains unknown. So, is Star Trek IV going to be made? Or is it dead? We don't really know. We can only... Hang on by our fingertips and wait and see. What is life going to be like for Captain Jean-Luc Picard, Starfleet, retired? Well, it seems his life will be radically altered. That is according to Alex Kurtzman, who told The Hollywood Reporter that Patrick Stewart's favourite captain will have a new life following the dissolution of the Romulan Empire. What is the next chapter in the life of Jean-Luc Picard? That's the question Star Trek diehards have been asking since August when Patrick Stewart officially boarded an untitled CBS All Access series that will see him play Picard for the first time since 
2002's Star Trek Nemesis. Little is known about the plot of the show, which has been described as an exploration of the next chapter of Picard's life. Fans have speculated that it will find him serving as an ambassador just as Leonard Nimoy's Spock did in the latter years of his life. Now, Trek captain Alex Kurtzman is pulling back the curtain on the upcoming project, revealing that a cataclysmic event depicted in J.J. Abrams' 2009 Star Trek movie impacted Picard in a big way. In that film, written by Kurtzman and former producing partner Roberto Orci, it was revealed that Nimoy's Spock failed to save the Romulan homeworld Romulus from a supernova several years after the events of Nemesis. Now Kurtzman, as part of a Creative Space interview with The Hollywood Reporter, is ready to reveal one massive clue about the premise of his CBS All Access Picard effort due in late 2019. Picard's life was radically altered by the dissolution of the Romulan Empire, Kurtzman tells The Hollywood Reporter. The Picard series will be the first on-screen Trek story set in the aftermath of that event, which would have altered the balance of power in the galaxy. The destruction of Romulus would also have extra resonance for Picard, who has a long and complicated relationship with the Romulans, the alien race that split from Vulcan society thousands of years ago and founded a separate civilization. The Romulans went on to control a portion of the galaxy, and the Empire was in opposition to the Federation for all of Picard's career. One of his goals as captain of the Enterprise was seeking a peace between the Romulan Empire and the Federation. Picard teamed with Spock during the events of the Next Generation two-part story, Unification, in which they learned that Romulans claiming to seek a peaceful reunification with the Vulcans were actually planning a secret takeover. And in the events of Nemesis, Picard faced off a clone of himself created by the Romulans. Kurtzman says Stewart agreed to return only if he could defy what people are used to seeing with Trek. He threw down an amazing gauntlet and said, If we do this, I want it to be so different, I want it to be both what people remember, but also not what they're expecting at all. Otherwise, why do it? Kurtzman recalls of their initial discussions for what would become the highly anticipated CBS All Access series. That was part of a long journey to woo Stewart back to the role that began more than a year ago. Fans have had a long-running debate about who the greatest Trek captain is. Although Kurtzman wrote two films centering on Captain Kirk, he's always considered Picard the greatest. So when he made a wish list of things he could do to build out All Access's Trek universe, bringing Stuart back as Picard was high on the list. The only problem? The actor was rumoured to be uninterested in revisiting Picard, whom he played for seven seasons on Star Trek The Next Generation. Kurtzman wasn't sure of the response he'd get when he called Stuart's agent and asked for a meeting. To our amazement and delight, the agent called back and said he was curious to know what we had in mind. Kurtzman, along with then Star Trek Discovery producer Akiva Goldsman and writer Kristen Baer, met with Stewart to pitch their vision. What we tried to convey in that meeting was how desperately we loved him and the character and how much we wanted to see what happened to Picard, said Kurtzman. Stewart asked them to prepare a three-page document outlining their ideas By this point, novelist and screenwriter Michael Chabon had joined the team to pitch a Picard-centric show and they soon realised they could not fit their ideas into just three pages. It turned into a 34-page document with no way to shorten it. We were going on all in and he was going to read it or not read it, love it or hate it. It was our best attempt at trying to get him to say yes. Fortunately, Stuart liked what he read. Kurtzman got the call that the actor would be in Los Angeles during the Oscars weekend and wanted to meet. He walked into the room and he had a huge smile on his face and said, This is wonderful. What he understood at that point was that he was with people who desperately wanted to collaborate with him, that we weren't trying to exploit him. He knew 
If he was going back to Picard, it needed to be for the greatest reason ever. The Picard series is just one of Kurtzman's Trek Empire. It will join the flagship series Star Trek Discovery, as well as Lower Decks, the upcoming half-hour animated comedy from Mike McMahon, and the short-form entry Short Treks. Other projects in development include a second kids-focused animated series, a Discovery spin-off starring Michelle Yeoh, and the younger skewing Starfleet Academy from Josh Schwartz and Stephanie Savage. For Trek fans, part of the draw of the upcoming Picard show is not only seeing Stuart back, but the possibility that members of his old crew might stop by for a cameo. Is that on the table? Anything could happen, Kurtzman says. So before we leave you tonight, uh, we have a news report just in from the Federation News and Weather Service. You want to see something really freaky? Check out the action near the Laurentian system. Great arcs of light emissions and an amazing singularity is uh, forming there. Kind of like a lightning storm in space. I'm Tony Robinson. You've been listening to Star Trek Weekly News. Now, if you've liked anything you've heard this evening, we'd love to hear from you. And you can send us an email. Just send it to contact at ufp.earth and we will get it. Don't forget to like us on Facebook. You can find us at United Federation of Podcasts. You can find us on Twitter at UFP Earth. I'd like to thank Brandon Mutella, Ken Tripp, and Zachary Moore, our executive producers and founders. They've done a great job in bringing this network to you. Do tune in again real soon for more news from Star Trek. Live long and prosper. This has been a production of MTMR Media Works.